With the release of the iPhone 15 models, a lot of you, but not all of you, either own an iPhone 14 model or the model before that, an iPhone 13 model. And a lot of you like to do upgrades, say, every sort of two years or so. So with this, today I've decided I'm going to do you an iPhone 15 Pro Max compared to the iPhone 15 Pro Max. Because like I said, a lot of you are probably going to be upgrading within the next year from an iPhone 13 model to an iPhone 15 model so without further ado guys what i'm going to do for you is the iphone 15 pro max versus the iphone 13 pro max and let's begin so then, as you can see here, we have the iPhone 15 Pro Max on the left and also the iPhone 13 Pro Max on the right. And let's begin then with this comparison. So first of all, let's talk about the actual iPhone sizes here. So the 15 Pro Max is slightly larger, but also slightly smaller at the same time. So the thickness of the iPhone 15 Pro Max is definitely thicker than what we've got with the iPhone 13 Pro Max. It's around about half a millimeter thicker, but the actual length of it is actually smaller as you can see here it's just under one millimeter more smaller and then also the width as well it's about one and three quarters millimeters sort of thinner in that in that width there so you definitely you might feel it a little bit better on your hand also at the same time as well with those curved edges now on the 15 pro max you may also notice the difference here compared to a 13 pro max if you don't have it in a case for example but for weight wise there isn't that much in it there's only about 17 grams in it now you might think 17 grams is a lot but it isn't really if you actually had a tampered glass um, on your iphone 15 pro max or even your 13 pro max these weigh around about 12 to 15 grams on their own so you can imagine just having 17 grams difference between these phones you're not really going to feel the difference between them in weight difference but obviously the 15 pro max does come in that new titanium finish and this is where it's saving up some of that weight and also at the same time as well it's got those enhancements of that, the new cameras and things like this but i'll talk a little bit later on but then for the actual screen resolution, they are actually slightly different here, but there's not much in it. As you can see here, it's 2,796 by 1,290 on the 15 Pro Max by 2,778 by 1,284 on the 13 Pro Max. Now to the naked eye, you probably are not going to see any difference on this. And actually you can see it here with the pixels per inch. The 15 Pro Max comes out 460 pixels per inch, whereas the 13 Pro Max is 4 158 pixels per inch there's two less pixels per an inch you're really really not going to see the difference here it's just the way how the new 15 pro max screen is manufactured that's giving it a slightly better by two pixels pixels per inch but that is it but the actual refresh rate actually is a bit different here and this again shows why the screens are different in the 15 pro max they do both have the 120 hertz pro motion so they can both go up to that but the main difference is the 15 pro max can go all the way down down to 1 hertz whereas the 13 pro max can only go down to 10 hertz and with this it does actually save on a lot of battery life what you'll actually hear a bit more about in later on this video but then moving on from that we do actually have the display protection and both of these phones actually have ceramic shield exactly the same sort of glass that's on top of the displays and also on the rear so nothing different there but then we do have the actual chipsets and the chipsets are a bit different from each other so the a17 is now known as the a17 pro inside this phone it's made on a three nanometer die it has a six core cpu and also a six core gpu and also at the same time as well it does have that 16 core newer engine too what the iphone 13 pro max also has but obviously the one in the 15 pro max is also way more powerful but the 13 pro max a15 has a five nanometer six core cpu and a five core gpu and don't also forget that obviously that the new 15 pro max can do ray tracing but if you wanted to know what it was like between the actual processors in their speed sort of difference well recently we found out what the geekbench sort of scores are for both of these and multi-core so you can see here that the 15 pro max comes out at 7238 whereas the 13 pro max comes out at 5466 so this is about 28 
28% faster on the 15 Pro Max to the 13 Pro Max. So you might see a little bit of a gain there, but to be deadly honest, most apps say if an app say took about 10 seconds to open on the 13 Pro Max, it may take say nine seconds to open on the 15 Pro Max. There's not really gonna be that much in it to be fair. Then also then we actually have the RAM amount. But again, things have changed here. So the iPhone 15 Pro Max for the first time does have eight gigabytes of RAM inside it and it's LPDDR5 RAM. Whereas the iPhone 13 Pro Max actually has slower LPDDR4X RAM and it's only got six gigabytes of it. So there is definitely a difference there that you should be able to open up more apps and things on your 15 Pro Max compared to the 13 Pro Max. For storage amounts, there is also again a difference here between them. For the first time, Apple have decided on the 15 Pro Max or Pro Max models here they're not going to offer 128 gigabytes storage they're starting at 256 gigabytes going all the way up to one terabyte whereas with the iPhone 13 Pro Max you can still get it at the 128 gigabytes and it's also got all the way up to one terabyte. For the actual battery sizes, there's not again that much in it between them. As you can see here, the 15 Pro Max has a 4,422 milliamp battery, whereas the 13 Pro Max has a 4,352 milliamp battery. And that basically means that the 15 Pro Max is 1.6% larger in its battery, which is really nothing. But the main thing is, is definitely to do with that A17 chipset to giving all of those efficiencies and also that ProMotion display going down to one hertz instead of 10 hertz. And as you can see here with playback time, it does actually make a difference. So the 15 Pro Max, you can see it's actually gaining an extra hour in sort of playback or video compared to the 13 Pro Max. And then same with audio playback as well. The 15 Pro Max can actually get five more hours out of it and remember this wouldn't actually be really showing anything on your display so it's got nothing to do with that so really this is just literally juicing it out of the actual chipset and the actual battery so definitely the 15 pro max has definitely got some enhancements in there then for wired and wireless charging, for the first time ever, the iPhone has got a USB-C port, and it's about time as well, it got this. So it can charge up to 28 watts. So this basically means if you were to charge in say a 20 watt charger, what is the minimum? This will basically charge at 20 watts, but basically at the same time as well, if you say put in the 60 watt charge into the 15 Pro Max, it will only charge at 28 watts maximum. Whereas the 13 Pro Max has that lightning connector, you can plug in say a five watt charger, a 15 watt charger 18 watt or even a 20 watt but basically it will only charge at 20 watts an absolute maximum magsafe technology hasn't changed a bit here so they both here at 15 watts Moving on to water resistance, they're both exactly the same here. IP68, six meters up to 30 minutes. So if you dropped it into a pool, you easily got enough time to rescue your phone out and not cause any damage. Then for the actual ports, as I said before, the actual 15 Pro Max has a USB-C port at the bottom and it can actually go up to 10 gigabits if you want to get data off it. Whereas the charging cable on the 13 Pro Max is still lightning and still using USB 2.0 technology. So this is about 400. 80 sort of megabytes per second really so you're really getting a massive difference there. you're getting about 20 times or over 20 times more speed power as it were transferring data of 15 pro max compared to a 13 pro max if you use a cable to do that then we've also got the action button that was introduced to the 15 Pro Max. Obviously, the 13 Pro Max doesn't have this. It only has the silent switch sort of button, but the action button, the 15 Pro Max, you can, as you know, change it to multiple different things if you just don't want the silent sort of switch on the side instead. For Bluetooth technology, the 15 Pro Max comes with Bluetooth 5.3, whereas the iPhone 13 Pro Max comes with Bluetooth 5.0. So it's a slight enhancement here. Then for the actual rear cameras, this is where there are some changes, definitely. So the 15 Pro Max has got a new 48 megapixel wide camera. This is even newer than the one we got in the 14 Pro Max. It's also got a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel telephotos. And these two are actually better than the ones that were in the 13 Pro Max. They've got bigger aperture, bigger sensors, bigger everything. Let's in far more light on the 15 Pro Max to the 13 Pro Max. But both of them can still record 4K video and both of them also still do have that LiDAR sensor. But for features wise, if you want to know more about this for the rear cameras, basically it means that we've got quad tone inside this. We've also got a 25 digital zoom in the 15 Pro Max compared to the 15 times digital zoom. And the main reason behind that is because the 15 Pro 
Pro Max has that new five times optical zoom, whereas the iPhone 13 Pro Max only has a three times optical zoom. Also, the iPhone 15 Pro Max using that 48 megapixel can also offer a two times optical zoom as well, because how high the pixels are. But you're also getting very similar features like night mode, deep fusion, smart HDR, Apple Pro Raw, Apple Pro Res, but the difference is the iPhone 15 Pro Max can do up to 60 frames per second this time on that. And also you get 60 frames cinematic on the iPhone 15 Pro Max compared to only 24 frames per second on the iPhone 13 Pro Max when it first got introduced. For selfie cameras, there's a bit of difference here. We've got a 12 megapixel cameras, but they're both very different here in the sense that obviously the 15 Pro Max has actually got an autofocus built into it, but both of them can still record up to 4K video. For the actual U chip or the Ultra Band chip inside them, the iPhone 15 Pro Max has the newer U2 chip inside it. What's about basically three times as powerful, gives three times the range of finding the 15 Pro Max over what the iPhone 13 Pro Max currently offers at the moment. For the actual prices, the prices are funny enough are basically exactly the same, even though it doesn't seem it here. With Apple ditching the 128 gigabyte model, now the 15 Pro Max starts at 1,199 US dollars for the 256 gigabyte model. But at the end of the day, when the iPhone 13 Pro Max came out, if you were to buy yourself a 256 gigabyte model, it was also 1,199 US dollars. So technically, there is no price differences in that sort of way. Obviously, like I just said, Apple have just got rid of the 128 gigabyte version for the 15 Pro Max. Then for colors, we do have some changes here. So the 15 Pro Max comes in that brand new titanium finish. And basically all these colors you can see here, I've just got titanium added at the end. So black titanium, white titanium, blue titanium, natural titanium. And with the iPhone 13 Pro Max, because it was made out of a stainless steel, it has the traditional silver, space black, gold, came out with Sierra Blue as well as the special edition color. And then about six months into actually the course of the 13 Pro Max being sold, a new Alpine green color came out too. And with that guys, will you be upgrading this year? And what iPhone model will you be buying? And there we have it guys. As you can see, the 15 Pro Max does have a lot of enhancements over the 13 Pro Max. Obviously, you're getting a lot of those upgrades that came from last year as well, like Dynamic Island and a few other bits and pieces too. But obviously, better camera, better zoom, you know, slightly bigger battery, but obviously the actual battery life is better. You're also getting USB-C. We mentioned them all already, but you get the idea. It's definitely worth upgrading if you are due an upgrade this year to get yourself the new iPhone 15 Pro max and also on that note as well guys it's time to wrap up this video so if you have enjoyed watching it please do press the like button and also at the same time as well if you want to hear the latest apple news reviews and comparisons like we've done today make sure you subscribe to this channel and also hit that notification bell until next time guys i will see you really soon take care bye bye